My name is Maureen, uh, Maureen Fiora, and I'm originally from Washington, D.C., and have lived in a lot of different places. I'm a wanderer, I'm a searcher. I am a mother right now, which is really grounding, and I don't know how good it is to be a wild Mustang with two boys, um, but I'm hoping to get back to that wildness one day and live wildly every day with my boys being creative and zany. I did find my soulmate and he's not a cowboy. He is a fisherman. <laughs> he's like Neptune Jesus. <laughs> Every Good Friday in northern New Mexico, flocks of pilgrims make their way to Chimayo, a tiny church hidden between burnt orange mesas and dried out riverbeds. Some pilgrims walk hundreds of miles in their bare feet to show devotion and pray for a miracle. In 2003, I was living 10 miles away from Chimayo, and I needed a miracle. I was 27 years old. For the past seven years, I had been searching for my place in the world, first with AmeriCorps in San Francisco, then with Peace Corps in Costa Rica. When I returned to the US, I didn't know where I belonged, so I did what I knew. I wandered. I jumped in my truck and drove out west from Washington, D.C. I didn't know where I was going or where I would stop. That's how I landed in Española, a small rural town 30 miles west of Santa Fe. All I knew was that I needed some grounding. I wanted to lay down roots. I was ready to find my soulmate, and I was sure he was a cowboy. I had been living in Española for six months, and so far I was no closer to finding my way. No furniture, no soulmate. So the day before Good Friday, I decided to make the pilgrimage to Chimayo. I stuffed my fanny pack with energy bars, Gatorade, a cell phone, a tube of sunscreen, and five dollars. It was 3 a.m. when I left my pace was brisk on the unmarked road outside of my rental house. As the sun drew out of the sky, I noticed more walkers on the country road. Locals set up wobbly cardboard tables offering snacks and tiny juice cups. Some pilgrims stopped for nourishment. Others lingered engaging in conversation with each other. I just noticed the people passing me. There weren't many. But the ones that did lit a fire in my belly to keep going, move faster. I wanted to win. <laughs> I viewed the other walkers as my opponents. I wanted to take them down. I was Miss Pac-Man chomping up the little dots in the maze. Some people prayed while they walked. I didn't care. It made them easier targets. <laughs> One down, 10 to go. I was a machine. Along the way, there were more tables, young cheering teenagers, and music blaring from houses that lined the secluded road. It was more like a neighborhood block party than some religious ritual. I ignored the festivities and just kept walking, checking people off. I was going to walk this thing faster than anyone ever had before. Around mile seven, my body began to feel the stress of the walk. My hips throbbed from the inside out. Heat radiated down my legs. Sharp pains like someone digging a knife into my joint came and went in waves. Still motivated with winning in my heart, I rounded a dusty hill and saw the opening of a small clearing. Golden aspens framed the entrance, 
and people spilled into a humble plaza. As I took my next steps to enter, I couldn't for the life of me remember why I walked 10 miles in record time. What the hell were all these people doing here? In the corner of the plaza, I saw a line coiling out from a small adobe church. I remembered my miracle. With my shoulders hunched, I took my place in line and waited like a sheep. Soon, I was inside the dark church. It was simple, wooden pews on a dirt floor, old pictures of saints in wooden frames. Along the walls were sets of crutches left behind. I was sure by pilgrims who had received their miracles, I was getting closer. Finally, it was my turn. I looked straight in front of me and saw nothing. I looked down and there it was, a pile of dirt. You have to be kidding me. This is what the people walked hundreds of miles for? A pile of red dirt and a little kid's plastic beach shovel sitting on top. I wanted to say, what the fuck? I walked all this way for fucking dirt. <laughs> I kneeled down, grumbling. Thank God no one could see my face. I was so angry. Why didn't anyone tell me this is what I was laboring for? I scooped up a pile of dirt and stuffed it into my pockets. <laughs> it was over in a matter of seconds. I stood up saw the exit, and made my way. The light stung my eyes as I entered the plaza. I stood in the square, confused. Everyone seemed to have a purpose but me. When my coworkers told me about this place where so-called miracles happen, they told me no one walks home from Chimayo. It's tradition that locals carry pilgrims in the beds of their pickups, trucks, back to their cars and homes. It's one of the reasons I took this journey. I could see the pickups, but no one asked me if I wanted a ride. I looked for a line, a sign, but there was nothing. I started to walk back the same way I came. I figured someone would see me and give me a ride. People saw me all right, but instead of stopping, they would yell out, you're going the wrong way. No one walks home from Chimayo, except for me. At mile 19, an old man pulled his heavy car over and asked if I wanted a ride. I said yes. I think I would have cried if I weren't so dehydrated. It felt amazing to finally slide into a seat. He said his name was Angel. I said, of course it is. He told me his wife passed away, and he does this to honor her. Angel drove me a half mile down the road and dropped me off in front of my house. I opened the door and collapsed on my air mattress. It had a small hole in it and deflated. I sank to the hard floor and cried in my empty house with no tables, no chairs, no couches, no soulmate, and two scoops of red dirt in my pockets. <laughs> I grumbled to a lot of people over the next couple of months about my torturous journey, the false promises, the lies, the blisters. It took me almost a year of rehashing before I started to see the pilgrimage in a new light, the walk, the dirt, the ride. The way I walked to Chimayo was the same way I moved through life. So concerned with rushing to the end, wanting to win. All of it, I thought, to the detriment of missing the journey itself. Now I see it was never about the dirt at the end of the road. I think it was about catching the sunrise, which I rushed past. It was about savoring the birds singing which I'd also missed. It was about walking with other pilgrims, 
stopping for juice and cookies, and most importantly, asking for a ride. I did receive a miracle that day. I learned that life happens in the in-between places, and I was missing all the good stuff that happens there. Today, when I get caught up in where I want to be in relation to where I am, I remind myself, Maureen, don't you do another Chimayo. Thank you.